Alright, continuing our folly with this Ford cassette stereo from 1998, I am ready to give this thing its very first full test with sound. Um, for the record, I'm filming this with my camcorder instead of the Canon in high definition. The reason for that is, well, first of all, I can only fit five minutes of high definition video on my one gigabyte SD card before I have to flush it out so I can keep going. Uh, second of all, I think the batteries in the Canon need to be recharged. The battery life isn't that great when you're recording video, especially in high definition. And it's easier to edit and faster to render, faster to upload. It overall just makes things easier for me. So anyway, getting back to this radio, um, I also discovered a extremely cool feature it has thanks to YouTube user V Westlife who thanks to my earlier video of this radio found out how he could wire and test his Ford radio which is a 2003 model made by Visteon. I believe this unit was made by Alpine but uh, given that it looks similar to his maybe this one was made by Visteon too I don't know. But uh. Thanks to his video, I discovered that this radio has a feature that I think is cooler than RDS and cooler than all the other features that this radio has, and that's AM stereo. And if you don't know, yes, there is AM in stereo, just like there's FM stereo. AM stereo never caught on that well. There are quite a few stations, I think most of them are in the US, that still broadcast in AM stereo. And you need a radio like this one that's capable of receiving AM stereo. And this one does, and you should check out V Westlife. Uh, he has quite a few videos of AM stereo recordings. And AM stereo sounds absolutely awesome. I'd say very close to, if just as good as FM stereo. But anyhow, uh, yeah, I had no clue this radio has AM stereo. So thanks to V Westlife for showing me that. But now, I bought the part I needed to wire this radio up. Here it is right here. It's what's called a reverse wiring harness, as opposed to a regular wiring harness used to wire an aftermarket radio into a vehicle to adapt it to the OEM radio harness. This is what's called a reverse wiring harness. It's the female connector with the wires on it. Uh, that can be used to wire an OEM radio back into its respective vehicle if, say, the vehicle was broken into and the uh, permanently wired harness was destroyed. So I bought this and it should plug in and I should be able to wire it to power and I should be able to hook up speakers to it and everything. So we're going to hopefully do that in this video and give this radio its very first full test. Okay, I've plugged in the reverse wiring harness. It seemed to go in and fit just fine. I forget if I bought this from eBay or Amazon. It, uh, it cost around 10 bucks to buy, so not too bad. But uh, it's in there, so we have all the wires here. This yellow one's, of course, for standby power. The red's for ignition power. And then these four uh, white and green wires are for speakers, and then there's wires under it. They're purple and gray. They're for speakers. Uh, this thing came with a piece of paper that showed what the wires were, were for, and this wire, which I, I originally treated as ground to uh, try and hook this radio up to power to turn it on, it is in fact for an amp ground. So uh, now I know what that mystery pin is actually for, and I was right too, so that's pretty cool. Thank you, Chickadee. I also did some reading online and found out that I, uh, in fact, was not hurting the amp in this radio by running it without speakers. Modern transistorized amps, they are, I guess they work through voltage, so increasing the volume essentially increases the voltage potential that the amp has. So running it without speakers is not burdening it by not having a proper load hook to it. It's not hurting it in any way. So I've just got one speaker that we're going to test it with. This is a crappy generic paper cone speaker that I pulled out of a JVC boom box from the mid 2000s that died. And uh, it's rated for 3 watts and it has a 4 ohm impedance. 
Um, it ever so slightly worries me the 4 ohm impedance because I always ju I just assume that this thing would have an 8 ohm impedance. And if it does, I don't want to hurt it by hooking up a 4 ohm speaker. But uh, I did my research and everything I've read suggests that most if not all car stereos use a 4 ohm impedance. So uh, I guess I'll just go with that and hope nothing happens. I also bought some brand new aftermarket speakers uh, to the local surplus and salvage store in Calais, Maine. $35 got me a pair of speakers rated for 200 watts maximum for the pair. Really nice speakers with poly, uh, polypropylene cones and rubber surrounds and hopefully they'll sound great once I try them but just for now we're going to try this crappy thing. So crappy in fact that literally seconds before I was ready to film this video the positive wire fell right off so I had to get out my soldering iron and uh, solder it back on and here I have it sitting here just cooling down and it's pretty much cooled off and ready to be put away. So uh, I'm going to hook everything up here and uh, we're going to try this thing out. And I just remember those aftermarket speakers I bought too, they were also rated for 4 ohm impedance. Okay, I think I got everything hooked up correctly. I've done my best to separate all the wires and make sure none of them are touching each other. Let's uh, power this thing on and see what goes bang. Uh, when I turn this on, it'll default to 760 AM and the volume will be turned up midway, so we should hopefully hear a fizzing. Oh, I'm going to hook up the antenna too. Can't forget the antenna, because we are going to try listening to, them, to uh, some stuff. Okay, here goes nothing. I don't hear a fizz. Oh dear. That is not good. That is not good at all. Well, I got bad news. I think this radio is dead. I've connected the speaker to the uh, front left terminals. I got them connected to the rear left terminals right now. And I've tried it and I'm getting absolutely nothing. So I don't know if I bought a dead radio, um, if connecting the power to that amp ground pin did something, but I turn it on and I'm getting absolutely nothing. If we press 3 and 6 it'll do a speaker test. There we go. Yeah. That is great. So I don't know. I don't know. That just sucks. Oh man, when last resorts happen, they really happen. I got this radio working. Now I know what the amplifier ground's for. It actually has to be connected to ground for the amplifier to turn on. If you were to hook up an outboard amplifier, you'd disconnect that so the built-in amplifier doesn't kick on. I've connected this wire here to ground turn on the power and we got sound ah. now I'm just going to turn the power off again because I see some wires starting to get close together I got six wires bare now because I tried the speaker on three different channels power on Let us know what you think on the MPBN Facebook page. We look forward to hearing from you. What do you think? Tell us on the MPBN Facebook page. And thank you. Today's program is made possible by MPBN listeners. And by... There's a news station, News 88.9 in St. John. I wonder if I can get it from here. Almost. Let's try the AM. 
Let's tune into CBC Radio 1 on 990 kilohertz. No, 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 stop. Hold up the antenna. I'm not going to get it. Wow, this is great. This is awesome. I thought this radio was dead, but it's absolutely perfect. This is awesome. Um, camcorder might be making too much electrical noise. Especially because the inverter on this power pack is turned on right now to power the camcorder. Oh, let's try. During a midnight showing of the said a number of movie theaters in parts of the country that are showing the new Batman movie after a mass shooting at an Aurora, Colorado theater overnight. In New York, officers are seen stationed outside the AMC theater in Times Square. People's bags are being checked Washington, D.C. In Paris, the movie's premiere has been canceled. Workers were seen pulling down the red carpet display at the theater in France's Champs Elysees Avenue. We're learning more about the suspect who's accused of barging into a Denver area theater at the midnight showing, hurling a gas canister and opening fire on the movie. Let's do a speaker test. I guess it plays radio sound through it. Woo! This is cool. That's awesome. I was so afraid that after all that money I spent, I bought a bum radio in the end. But no, that's what that amplifier grounds for. Obama has cut short his campaign swing through Florida, saying this should be a day for prayer and reflection. Speaking in Fort Myers, the president observed a moment of silence for the Colorado shooting victims, saying those lost as a reminder that life is fragile. The people we lost in Aurora uh, loved, and they were loved. They were mothers and fathers. They were husbands and wives, sisters and brothers, sons and daughters. That crappy-ass speaker actually doesn't sound that bad, so I bet those $35 uh, so sure, sco sure, whatever they're pronounced, however they're pronounced, them speakers I bought, I bet they'll sound absolutely awesome. But uh, yeah, I think that's enough playing around for now. I bought a piece of vintage audio equipment uh, yesterday that I'm going to be making a video about. That's another project, and uh, I can't wait to show you guys that. But for now, there is the 1998 Ford cassette stereo with AM stereo in addition to RDS and Dolby noise reduction for the cassette player. Success! Successful sound test. So uh, awesome. The next video of this radio will probably be how it sounds with them aftermarket speakers I bought hooked up.